So before looking at the software that Morningstar provide, we'll just take a quick look at the hardware. So I've just unscrewed the cover on here and you can see that inside we've got these dip switches here. Switch 8 is the one that enables the settings of the control to be changed over the Ethernet that's off at the moment and this white lead here is the Ethernet lead and so that comes out of there and feeds round to the router. So there's the other end of the Ethernet wire that just plugs into the back of our router and from there the data goes onto the wireless network. So with the TriStar controller plugged into the home network the easiest way to see what it's doing is to go to the little website that it runs. The address for that is simply TSMPPT followed by the serial number of the controller Then you can find that on the side of the casing for it. So once that's loaded up you've got some details about the battery, it's on float at the moment, you can see the voltage, the current that's going into it, the power that's coming out the panels. Also on the panels themselves you can see the voltage, the current, these sweep parameters show what the PowerPoint tracker had identified. So it was finding that this was the open circuit voltage, this is the voltage for maximum power point and you'll see that it's operating close to that at the moment. And this was the power that it identified could be delivered last time it did a sweep. Interestingly the time between sweeps can vary um, according to what, what the power output of the controller is and what's going on. We've also got temperature of the battery and the heat sink, some counters on amp hours and kilowatt hours and if there was any alarms or faults they would show here. Another useful feature is the data log. So in here we've got several parameters and you can choose which ones are recorded. You can see some days ago here I changed the settings and started recording a few new ones. Uh, this lets you go back and see how many minutes were spent in float and absorption so you can see whether the battery's got a full charge during during a day when you've been out. Uh, you can see what the maximum power delivered from the array was during that time and various other settings. So this is very useful for keeping track of how the system is doing when you've been out for the day. Finally on the network tab, there's settings here that you can edit if you've left the dip switch on on the controller. Now you'll see here it says disabled and you can also see it says that the dip switch 8 is in the off position. So when I was altering these settings I, I'd obviously turn that on and rather than using DHCP where the controller will pick up its own network details from our home router, what I've actually done is put some in manually. So I set the IP address to 192.168.164. When I first tried accessing the live data on my phone, I found that if you use the TSMPPT address, then it doesn't load it. As I mentioned, I used a, a fixed IP address instead, and by using that, The live data loads just fine. So you can, on your phone, anywhere within the house on the wireless network, view all of the data. You can also go to the data log and view that as well. Obviously you need to zoom in a bit to see the, uh, the numbers. It is theoretically possible to send this information outside of the house onto the internet, but I've, I've not done that for security reasons. Morningstar also provide this MSView software which lets you get much more details about what the controller is doing. If I start with devices and search, it's immediately found my controller, connects to it, it will appear here initially in red and then in green once it's connected. Now I call up a new display, so I'm just calling up a state display here. If I expand the controller, I can now look at different things like, say, the battery voltage. Um, I could look at the output power from the array at the moment. And these are updated every second or so, and that lets you get a live view of what's going on with the controller at the moment. You can also view this historically as well. If I start another display up and this time go for a historical graph and choose log files here I could look at something like say the watt hours that have been produced daily 
And here you can see when I upgraded the system because it jumped up from this level up to this level. And this is the last few days with the new 750 watt panels compared to the 240 watt panels that I had on before. The other type of display you can do is a logger. And what this is, is logging details much more rapidly. So if I go back to the devices tab and let's say I want to log the output power and the battery terminal voltage and I want to log it every two seconds I choose the file to save it in so I'll just call that log.csv and I can say record so I'll leave that recording for a short time now okay I've left that running for a bit over a minute so I'll stop that now and if I go to the file, open that in Excel, and you can see I've got those two variables that I've plotted. I've got the output power and the battery voltage. And obviously it's very easy to select all that data and insert a graph. So we can see there the battery voltage um, and the output power. Output power is dropping there because the uh, freezer compressor was just shut off. And that's why it's, it's falling away because the battery is on float charge and it's already full. The other thing you can do with MS View is change the settings in the device itself. So if I get rid of all those displays, I'm not actually going to edit them, but I can show you what we can do. So on the tools, we go to TriStar MPBT Setup Wizard. Now it's warning me that there's all kinds of changes that I could make here that could damage it. It's also saying that I need to actually disconnect the solar panels before I make any changes to the dip switches or changes through here. And that's really, really important that you do that. So we read from the controller. Yes, it's a solar controller. It's got the IP address there. So we go. Then it takes a few seconds. Now it's finished. And here we can immediately see all the different variables that we could change. We can also uh, print a version of this to it um, and save that as a PDF or something. If we go to actually um, edit these, then you go into the setup wizard. So you can see here, you go through all kinds of variables. I'm not going to talk through these. I'm not going to give any advice on what would be the right settings for you because this is completely custom to every system and you really do have to be careful. If you get this wrong, you could um, cause some pretty serious problems. But you've got everything from setting the absorption voltages, temperature compensation, reminder for doing battery services. You can look at what level you do a floats charge at. Um, interestingly, the float cancel is actually saying if the battery drops below this voltage, then the following day you don't do floats charge at all. You just absorb all day to uh, help the battery recover from its uh, deep discharge. You can choose whether you turn equalize on, what voltage it's at. You can also look at voltages that you want to disconnect the battery if it gets too high. Maximum limits for normal regulation and battery current limits. Obviously, I've set this to 60, which is what the controller can handle. But if you were using a battery that was a bit more limited, you could have reduced that. You can also choose what voltages the LEDs on the controller come on and off at. So I've set these according to what gives me the information I want. And then finally, you choose the variables which get logged. And you saw earlier where I'd made a change and there was, there was different data locked. Finally, I've not got into um, these settings, but you can actually set it up to uh, send you an email uh, if it's connected to a, a server. And you can have it send you different notifications by email to tell you what the controller is doing. Uh, if you've changed any settings, you could then program the controller. You can also save these settings to a file. You can read them from a file. I'm not going to do any programming now because I've already got the control how I want. But uh, there you go. It's a very powerful piece of software. And with that and the web view as well to get you uh, an easy view of what's going on, it's uh, 
it's a really powerful system to complement the hardware side of what Morningstar have supplied.